stay strong, and keep the fight going. All new and only here on WHAS 11 News at 6, part three of our series, Road to Reform. In March, our police department was changed forever when the Department of Justice released new findings after their years-long investigation. They found evidence of discrimination, excessive use of force, and more. Now, the federal government will monitor our city and police until they have made significant changes. Tonight, we're giving you a glimpse into Louisville's future under federal supervision through the eyes of a city under watch for more than a decade. All week, we've reported from New Orleans, first showing you the similarities to Louisville, and then the reform coming from their agreement with the Justice Department. But now, as Isaiah Kim Martinez and senior photojournalist Alyssa Newton show us, many want out as the city's crime problem only grows worse. Here in New Orleans, city leaders, attorneys, even community leaders all agree the consent decree has done a lot of good, making for a better police department. But now, several years later, some say it's now become a burden. Can Louisville find the middle ground? As night falls in the French Quarter, New Orleans police officers patrol each intersection. The city's eyes and ears struggling to keep up with the highest murder rate per capita in the country. Shattered windows. Crime has increased dramatically. Glaring as we walked. And there's many factors at play. Certainly one of them is the lack of manpower. Eric Hessler, the attorney for the Police Association of New Orleans, says the agreement between the city and the federal government has become a never ending battle. They've accomplished the task. The monitor seemed to come back and say, no, you forgot to dot this I and cross this T, so go back and do it again. Longtime journalist Mike Pearlstein, investigative reporter, WWL TV New Orleans, has seen it firsthand. To say this department is limping along might be an understatement. NOPD, mass departure, is hundreds of officers short, and those leaving tell the story. They explain the consent decree that well, we're walking on eggshells. They tell you that? Oh, yeah. Cited in the actual exit interviews, some of them documented in writing. In part two of this series, we had to change the culture here. We showed you NOPD's improved policies and procedures over the last 10 years under the Justice Department's watch. We believe we are at substantial compliance. Now interim police chief Michelle Woodfork feels her team has proved ready to move on to the self-monitoring phase. And we just want the opportunity to show that we can sustain those reforms and become more compliant. We say we're at 86%. But the feds have argued otherwise. They say we're at 66% compliance. In a quarterly report earlier this year, consent decree monitors called 2022 a, quote, challenging year for the NOPD, noting slippage in their ability to sustain reforms implemented. Then, in April, a response to the city's motion to terminate the consent decree highlighted two major areas of concern. First, noting officers failed to provide adequate justification for nearly one third of pat downs or frisks. And then noting disparities for people of color in vehicle exits, firearm pointing and response times. That motion ultimately was denied. How do you approach something like that as far as putting an end to it? It's very difficult. Well, the federal government can, can sort of be the 800-pound gorilla. Mike Magner. I was an assistant U.S. attorney here in New Orleans for 20 years. Prosecuted a number of police brutality cases post-Katrina. This is a long-haul problem and must be addressed in a long-haul way. But he admits at this point, the costs may be starting to outweigh the benefits. The city's having a very difficult time hiring new police officers and keeping the good ones that they have. The lack of officers is hindering the department's ability to be in compliance. But at the same time, the lack of officers is because of some perceived onerous conditions of the consent decree itself. It can work maybe too well. After um, so long, uh, I think it starts to wear. When are we ever going to do enough? I, I don't know. City leaders pleading to finish this chapter. I think we should have had it closed behind us already. I think we're going to continue for quite a while, though, unfortunately. And a story that appears far from complete. In New Orleans with senior photojournalist Alyssa Newton, I'm Isaiah Kim Martinez, WHAS 11 on your side.
Despite the struggles, some citizens fear the police department will shift back to their own ways once the feds leave. In our 30 minute special report tomorrow night, we share their pleas for protection and the city's advice for Louisville. What we can do differently to avoid the same costly mistakes. It all starts tomorrow night at 530, only right here on WHAS 11 News.